Howdy Doody Church. Because we just don't quit talking. So if you are one of those people who like to come to church and have silence and meditate, uh, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen here. Uh, and uh, you might do that, well not today, I was going to say you might just do that in your car before you come in, but not today, we don't do melting out there. Anyway, uh, welcome, uh, Miss Charlene is not with us today, uh, nor Nelson, because their daughter has been, has COVID, and she lives with them. So Charlene called me last night and said, I think we, we need to stay home for a few days, so prayers for uh, Charlene and Nelson that they do not uh, contract this virus because uh, if you remember, Nelson was one of the first people that had it when it started, was very, very ill, was in the hospital for, what, two, three weeks? Yes. Uh, and still has, he's kind of like the long mauler, still has symptoms, so we're just really praying that Nelson does not uh, come down with this and, and, and Charlene as well. So. And Kim was supposed to be scheduled for surgery uh, on the 14th, and um, so I don't know. We'll see how that plays out. That might get rescheduled. Uh, this morning, as a well, let me call your attention to the announcements on the back, so you have those to take home with you. They're there. You can read them. I'm not going to go over all of them. Tomorrow is the 4th of July, and the office will be closed. Um, so just make note of those other announcements and then the other one at the bottom uh, there will be only this service next Sunday and then we you are all invited to stay for lunch afterward and uh, it's not a problem so just come and enjoy and uh, celebrate together my family will be here I'm excited about that and you will get to, to meet them and and the little kids that you might remember that would sit on the front pew while I was up here uh, are now much bigger than that uh, and hopefully this Sunday I will not have to stop the sermon and go down and say, I need you to sit up. <laughs> uh, hopefully I won't have to do that. Hopefully I won't have to do that next time. Anyway. <laughs> so, good memories, good memories. So, uh, I invite you, as you are able to stand, please stay seated if that's easier for you. Jesus doesn't care, and I don't care. But if you are able, then I would invite you to stand for the Affirmation of Faith, which is going to be our call to worship today, and then we'll move into our opening hymn from the um, So it's on the screen. Stand as you, if you will, as you are able. It's the Apostles' Creed. This is indeed what we believe. So let us say it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sat at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And amen. So now if you uh, are standing and will remain standing, our opening hymn is Come Thou Found of Every Blessing. Last week I said, if you have a favorite hymn, write it on the registration pad. Two different people wrote this hymn down. And then we had another one on the wings of the dove. And uh, so I hope that those who requested these are here today. We're going to do both of them. And so if you have a favorite hymn, write it on the registration pad, we'll, we'll get to it. But also let me remind you, please sign the registration pads, because we're picking those up. And, um, and if we don't have your information, if you don't think we have your address or email or whatever, that you would get the, the, uh, the newsletter, please uh, add that as well. So let us join.
Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of this day to an opportunity to come and to be in worship together as a family of faith. We give you thanks for uh, each and every one who is uh, present today and for all those who aren't. We especially want to remember uh, many, many people traveling this weekend and we just pray for traveling mercies and, and safety for everybody out there on the highways and byways. So we pray and ask for the power and presence of your Holy Spirit to come and fill this place and fill our hearts and minds <clears throat> that we might be open to all that is said and done today in this place, that you might speak to us, that we might hear what you say to us individually or corporately, and that we might go out to apply whatever it is that you might uh, call us to do today, knowing that you go with us. In Christ's name, amen. You may be seated and... Um, Ann Harris, I don't see children. Yeah, come on up. And so we need you to flip this on, uh, this mic on, if you will, for us, Philip. And this isn't about children. I wanted to say, well, I'm ready for children. So bring your grandchildren, and we're praying for children, and I'm going to stand ready like a Girl Scout. So when they come, I'm ready. Um, that hymn I wrote down last week. Uh, this was the hymn that Ken actually requested to be sung in his service. And I thought it was Blessed Assurance. So Janice did a beautiful Blessed Assurance, and I think that was more for me. But uh, just that it really moves me, and uh, I'm just so happy that we sang that hymn today. Um, I wanted to ask a special prayer for our military and our veterans today. Uh, I have a very personal connection to that. My son is a combat veteran and a first responder, and uh, he struggles with PTSD. And uh, just remember what they've given to our country and continue to give. And um, I, I have a praise because I've been so worried about him, and uh, he called me yesterday to tell me he was coming back from a, tr a retreat from a uh, a retreat called Mighty Oaks, and this is for uh, first responders and military veterans who are struggling. And uh, he said it, it isn't advertised that it's a Christian Bible-based type program, but it very much is. And uh, he hasn't been to church in a long time, and he's struggled with a lot and his family has too so he came back and he called me and he was just sounded so peaceful and happy and he said he really wanted to get back into church and try to uh, with god's help um get himself together and try to live the way he knows he should be so i just wanted to praise the lord for that today and ask y'all to please remember our military and our veterans and our first responders thank Amen. you Amen. Amen. And thank you so much uh, for that. So uh, with that, at this time, I'm going to call our ushers forth to wait upon us for our morning tithes and offerings. And as they do, our prayer will uh, present something called, uh, we didn't have it in time to print it here, it's a hymn that comes to the table.
God, we give you thanks for gift and giver. We pray again, as we do, that you would take these gifts, guide us, and direct us in the use of them to be faithful to you, your kingdom, and our brothers and sisters locally, nationally, and throughout the world. In your name we pray. Amen. And you may be seated, please. So we're going to take some time to uh, I'm going to come out there and uh, ask you if you have uh, joys uh, or uh, concerns to share with this community of faith today. I uh, should have left this, picked this up a little early. Uh, so, give you thanks for all of you who are here today and visitors among us as well. Make sure you practice your hospitality. Good to see you back among us, absolutely. And, and others. So, any other uh, joys or concerns to be lifted today? Yes? Uh, today, we my niece's birthday. She passed away last month. Okay, so, so for, for, my, for Judy, for her family, uh, her niece's for family. Her. For okay. And praise for three inches of bread the other day. And you got three inches. You must be living right. Uh, I got like a quarter of an inch. What does that say? Anyway, anybody up here? I, yes. Uh, my cousin, Donald Davis, um, has had leukemia. He's put in the hospital with possible heart failure. He has since been since put on dialysis. And yesterday he was put in the ICU blood pressure. So this is your. My cousin. cousin and his name is Donald. Donald, if you remember Donald. Not very fast for having the birth since you're connected. Absolutely. I believe, very I believe they were they were near a time when you weren't. So yeah. But it's good to have the baby. <laughs> Renee, yes. Well, I can't say that mine is a joy. It is in some ways, but my oldest granddaughter and our new school friends. Here yes, she is my district superintendent. Is in her senior year of medical school, and she has started her rotations. And because she is in the military, her rotations involve being sent to all of the military hospitals for four weeks at a time. She arrived at her first one last Sunday in Las Vegas. Poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> but. She, I guess it could have been San Diego. She, she was there to, to minister <coughs> to the patients in the hospital. Okay. She started running chills and has been diagnosed with COVID. So now they're, now they're okay. taking care of her. So her name is <coughs> Kylie. Okay, for Kylie, uh, Renee's granddaughter. But also, when she said, I were my district superintendent that I now serve under in the Coastal Bend District, uh, is like a daughter to Renee. So, uh, you know, I, I can get stories about my DS from Renee. And, uh, I like that. All right, so we will pray for your granddaughter. Yes? I'd like to, y'all remember my sister, she lost uh, her grandson. Oh, okay. Uh, a heart attack, 29 years old. 29 years old, grandson to a heart attack, and that's your sister. Okay, your sister and your niece. Thank you. And their names are? So, Mary Kay and uh, the daughter. Okay, thank you very much. Others? And it is good to have you all and have everybody here today. Yes. And Judy back, too. Others? Um, yes, I mentioned very Yeah. That's our old joys. My, my year away was, was probably the most positive experience in my life. It was probably not many people would say going to the court to jail for like, you know, for a very much of my experience. But it's what I did. Praise the Lord. We are waiting for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I don't know if I do that. Praise God. Grandpa's. Grandpa's. All right. Uh, and 
happy to be here. Praise God. And in her prayer for sunshine, she's got a uh, major surgery this week. Oh, okay. Um, they don't see my occupation, but it's surgery. It is surgery. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you for all of that. It's so good to have you back among us. And I always remind people, the Apostle Paul spent a lot of time in jail, wrote most of the New Testament from prison. So it's, it, it can be a very good time. It's like what you make out of it, right? What you make out of it. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Yeah. Glenn, we celebrate Maryland. Yes, I celebrate my finished treatment. She's doing better, and I am a retired nurse. <laughs> okay. We celebrate. Maryland has been going under uh, uh, weeks of treatment intravenously, three time, every eight hours. Glenn has been the head nurse. And the only good thing about that is she's been really nice to him since he's putting medicine in her vein. And but that's ended. So uh, look out. <laughs> I see the smoke coming from their house because I look down on it occasionally. But anyway, we, we give God thanks that Maryland got through this and we pray that it does what it's supposed to do. So uh, praise the Lord. Uh, and also, um, Jessica Moit uh, is scheduled for surgery on the 15th. And uh, so prayers for that. This is a nerve surgery. So pretty delicate and, and prayers that all that goes well for her. So I just lift her to you. Uh, many of you probably have heard, if you haven't, uh, Carl Walborg, Marianne's son, has been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. So please hold Carl and, and Marianne in your prayers. I, I've talked with him. He's got a very positive attitude. He has not seen his oncologist yet but uh, hopefully we'll this week and we'll find out a little bit more as far as stage and what he's looking at. But regardless, Carl Walmart, if you keep him in prayer, uh, appreciate it. Uh, for situations, of course, around our, our locally and around our state and around the world for, for this terrible tragedy in San Antonio this past week with uh, immigrants in, the, in that in our truck. I mean, it's just, that's just like, but so many other things too. We just, we know God's in the middle of it and we just pray for, for God's grace and to be with these families. So, anybody else? Uh, Jeff, uh, Jessica told me at the cooking class that Jeff was having some hernia problems. Okay. And so he was having some hernia surgery and he's not doing real well. Either. So they were not in worship this morning. They usually are early service. That to be addressed. Okay, so Jeff Moy, Jessica's husband, probably facing some surgery as well, but not. Uh, immediately, we hope. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Mary Ellen. It's a joy to have Nancy Clayton and her daughter Pam who are with us again this time. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. And Brenda over here who is with us again and others. So, yeah. Tom? My joy this morning are the beautiful flowers. I know it. Robin graced us again. Are these gorgeous? Yes. So, of course, I told her a week or so ago, you are now officially part of the worship team. <laughs> and guess who else just joined the worship team? Dan. Kathy Burleson yeah. has volunteered to stay and pick up all these registration pads. Oh, wow. yeah. And I said, well, you're on the worship team. <laughs> so if you haven't found your team, you better be finding it. <laughs> We're going to find it for you. <laughs> but anyway, that's all it takes. You know, praise the Lord, you're part of the worship team. So I appreciate all of that. So I'm going to kneel. If anybody feels led by the Spirit to come and kneel with me, you're welcome to come. We're going to sing one time through of Lord, listen to your children pray, which gives you time to come if you want. And uh, let's pray.
Almighty God, we come to you in prayer thanking you for the many blessings that, well, so many joys that have uh, been shared here this morning, much good news, and we lift that all to you, but we all come with more blessings, more uh, things to be thankful for than we could even begin to, to name or number on any, on any given day. But we just thank you because we know that all that we are and all that we have is a gift from you. And so we just pray that you would help us to be good stewards over it and uh, be generous in, in many ways uh, that others might come to know you through our giving and that we know that we will know the joy from, from that. We come to you on this uh, holiday weekend celebrating our, our independence. Sometimes it doesn't feel like maybe it's we're so independent, but uh, what we are, we are a, a free nation. Uh, and many have sacrificed, many, many have sacrificed over the years to bring us to this place this morning that we can, that we come here, that we come here not, not looking over our shoulders or fearful, but come here to be able to worship you openly uh, and freely and to live out our faith uh, in the same way throughout the, the, the week and the weeks and the months to come. We do pray for our today's service men and women, wherever they are, ask that you would bless them. Keep them safe, we pray, oh God, and for all of our, our first responders, and especially those who are dealing with the aftermath of, uh, of, of service. We just pray for each and every one in each and every situation. We pray for the end of the violence that we are experiencing in our communities every day, somehow, some way, and we know that we're a part of that solution. As we go out and talk about you and share our love for you and help people to understand that the, the answer is in you, not in, a, not in a gun or a bomb, not in um, arguing with each other, but in loving one another and respecting each other's um, opinions. Doesn't mean we have to agree with each other. Doesn't mean that we have to like what others do, but we are called to love them because we are all your children. And each and every one is precious in your sight. We pray for those today that are facing surgeries, those who are ill among us. We just pray for healing and we pray for wholeness. We pray for your healing touch to be upon each and every life, the ones that we know about and the ones that we don't. We ask that somehow, some way, that they would feel your presence surrounding them. Even now, as we pray for them, something reminds them that you are precious in their sight and you are with them no matter what they're going through. We pray that you be with us today as we prepare even now to receive the Lord's Supper today. A, a meal, a simple meal, but one that reminds us of the incredible sacrifice made for us by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that our sins are forgiven and that there is hope always in Christ. So be with us throughout the remainder of this service, but so especially as we go forth out into the world to always remember that you are with us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next uh, song was also requested, and uh, I have a feeling that Mike Damer asked for this, and they're not here today, and I didn't think about that, because last Sunday he asked if somebody would help water the yard while he was gone, but it just didn't click. So uh, we might be doing it again soon, but we can practice today, okay? So on the wings of, uh, of a dove.
was singing with us from heaven. He always requested that song. Uh, anyway, so much known to this congregation uh, over the years. Uh, I'll invite you to uh, join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. And my fault, even though uh, it's probably going to say the gospel, it is the gospel from Luke. Uh, it was the epistle last week, and I, I missed it when we did the bulletin. So it says the Episcopal, actually it's the Gospel, and Gordon Smith will share that with us now. And good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Holy Bible, I'll be reading it as she says, from the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 1 to 11. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, Eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Skipping now down to verses 16 through 20. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. May the Lord bless this, the reading of his holy word, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Quite frankly, uh, this is the lectionary reading for today from the Gospel. I was thinking about the fact that if ever a text spoke to us, surely it is this one today. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. The harvest is plentiful. Jesus isn't talking about wheat and corn here. Jesus is talking about people. People who do not know him. Those who are lost and living in the dark are many. And the laborers, those who will go out and introduce them to Jesus, are few. So through this living word of God, Jesus is saying the same thing to you and me today. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. 
But then he instructs us, as he did them, to pray and ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Well into his ministry, there were many more people now following Jesus than the original twelve. They were not any more educated than these fishermen, some of them. Uh, they were not uh, more qualified. Really kind of a bunch of misfits. But they had experienced God's power and authority through Jesus. And they knew that that authority had been given to them. And that therefore they could step out in faith and seek and save the lost. So Jesus sent out 70, 70 of them on a mission. Misfits on a mission. And they were to go out in pairs to reach the multitudes in several towns and prepare them for Jesus' forthcoming visit. Kind of sounds like John the Baptist, doesn't it? I mean, John the Baptist was born for the very purpose of announcing the coming of Jesus Christ to people. And he would go out, out in the wilderness, and, and do that by calling them to repent of their sins and be baptized. Be baptized by water because the one who would baptize them with the Holy Spirit was coming. Jesus gave these 70 persons uh, instructions. First of all, he said that you were to go out in pairs, two by two. Secondly, they were to pack light, carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and finally, they were to greet no one on the road. Well, you know, traveling was dangerous back then. People were often beaten and robbed and left for dead on those windy, dusty roads that would go through the mountains. We remember the story of the Good Samaritan. But again, not so much different from today's world, right? <coughs> Not so much different from today's world. When we are walking around, particularly in a parking lot, or a park, or driving, even pulling into our driveways, we need to be very vigilant and be aware of our surroundings, unfortunately. Jesus reminds them, and you and me today, that if we're going to get out there and talk about Him, Ah, we're going to run into a few wolves. Persons who are going to want nothing to do with anything we have to say about Jesus. And they might let us know that in, uh, in words or behavior that is not at all kind. And if that be the case, says Jesus, don't get in an argument. Just kind of brush it off and move on. No arm twisting, just a sincere invitation to come and join us that we might grow together in our understanding of God's love for all people, that we might grow together to be more like Him. But by offering that simple invitation, we will have planted a seed. Whether it's rejected or not, we will have planted a seed. A seed that God will water and nurture and hopefully one day will mature and bear fruit itself. So folks, if we want this congregation to grow, you and I have to get out there and talk to people wherever we are. And that doesn't mean you, you need to carry your Bible and start quoting scripture. That probably wouldn't be a good idea. But I'm telling you just to, to, get, to get into conversation with, with others. Uh, introduce yourself. Exchange small talk. But in the midst of that, you can say to them, by the way, do you have a church home? You will be surprised at the number of people who tell you they do not. And then you merely invite them. 
I would like to invite you to just come and worship with us one Sunday. You might even say, I would be happy to pick you up, or could you come this Sunday? I will meet you at the door. We're going to be designing some, some simple flyers that uh, we'll make available to, to all of you. Something that you can hand out to someone that you might meet. Some, something that offers some basic information about this family of faith. Some of those flyers will be published in the form of door hangers, so you can just hang them on doors and on your street or your neighborhood. Last Sunday, we had two visitors among us, a mother and her son, and they were here because Brenda No met them in a local restaurant. Uh, the way I heard the story is that they, they were there with a, a, a family, a group of family members, and uh, suddenly realized they were running out of seats at the table they had chosen. And so this mother and her son came over and asked Brenda if, they, if she would mind if they would sit with her. Of course, she said, not at all. And so they sat down and obviously got into a conversation and learned that they had a lot more in common than they thought. Number one, her name's Brenda too. <laughs> and her son is Kate and Brenda is back today. Because, you know, Brenda invited them. The reality is, out of 10 or 15 or 20 invitations that you offer, maybe one will respond and come. Okay? What we have to remember is, however, is with each invitation, you planted a seed. Okay? And had you not done that, the one who came would not have come. And that's what we celebrate. And perhaps that one will at some point invite another. Jesus gave the 70 authority and power, just as he gives to you and me. And they used it. And, and when they returned, they reported to Jesus, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. Now, that statement can be interpreted in many ways. Surely they had seen Jesus heal persons who possessed an unclean spirit, the Bible would say. In the very beginning of Jesus' ministry, actually, we read a story like that. I'm just turning to Mark. It's not on the screen, but just listen. The first chapter of uh, Mark's Gospel, you know, as you know, Mark... Uh, Mark just wanted to get it out there, the life and ministry of Jesus from the time of his baptism forward. Here you hear the story. If you go back to Mark, chapter 1, you read about John the Baptist. And then Jesus coming to him to be baptized himself to you know, initiate his formal ministry. And within the first chapter of Mark's gospel, you know, all that has happened. Plus, Jesus has already... Uh, started his group of 12. So he already has Simon Peter, he has Andrews, his brother, and then James and John, all right? And then going to the uh, 21st verse of this same first chapter, the, the five of them, it says, they went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and he taught. And they were astounded, astounded at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not the scribes. I'm going to ask you to turn that light off, please, uh, Norman, and just leave it off, even though I'm in the dark. That is just, who, who can do that? Philip? Philip. Can you just turn that bright light off? Let's, that, it, it just keeps coming on and on. Ah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> All right. Now I'm blinded, so I, I can't see the words, but that's okay. So they were all amazed. Uh, let's see. Let me, let me back up here. So 
just then, so he's teaching with authority, they said, you know, not like the scribes, and just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out to Jesus, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. Well, today we might refer to persons having an unclean spirit or being demon-possessed as persons dealing with some form of mental illness. Such persons surely need the love of God expressed to them by listening to them and providing them the help they need. That God might heal them through those who work with them. So often in today's world, people who struggle with such demons, if you will, are those who are not being listened to. The red flags that become so obvious after the damage is done went unnoticed before it was too late. Like the shooter that shot 19 students and two teachers in Uvalde. There were all, all kinds of signs about this young man for at least two years. You have here in power, my brothers and sisters, because as baptized Christians, God gave it to you. And you and I need to use it. Reaching out to someone who is lonely or grieving or someone showing signs of depression, for someone to offer a listening ear to such persons, you know, what, what might seem to be just such a simple act of love, can prove to be life-changing for that person. And of course we remember that it is God's power working through us. It's not our power. It's the power of God given to us. And as Jesus reminds the 70, you were so excited and so happy about all that, that they had accomplished during their misfit mission, Jesus said, now do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Rejoice because you're doing what God has called you to do, and be glad about that. And surely you know the joy of that, so celebrate the joy. Celebrate the joy, but remember to give God the glory. God alone who always deserves the glory. The harvest is plentiful, my friends. The laborers are few. Who will you strike up a conversation with this week? You know? Somewhere where you're having lunch, dinner, somewhere where you're just being, or somebody you bump into in a store. You know, we're so used to just going our way and not paying attention. But God puts people in our path every day, throughout the day, and what we have to learn to do is to be sensitive. Who are you sending my way today, oh God? Help me not miss an opportunity somehow, in some way, share God's love with somebody else, and perhaps an invitation to be a part of my family of faith. And as Jesus promised, he will always be with us, always, till the end of the age. Praise the Lord, in the name of God the Father.
Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen. And so now we do prepare to receive uh, uh, communion and the Lord's Supper this morning. And so I um, think everything that you will need to respond to will be on the screen. to where you're invited to come and we will offer you um, we will offer you a piece of bread and you will dip it in the chalice. However, uh, there are those among us who might still be a little uh, want to be cautious about that. And so we do have the individual cups right here that will be consecrated with everything else. And we also have, if you are on a gluten-free diet, we have gluten-free. So it will all be here. So after all this is consecrated, you will be invited to come. And then I would invite you, as you wish, if you come, receive whatever form of element you wish, uh, you are certainly always invited to uh, Spend some time at the altar in prayer um, or return to your seat. We are reminded this morning that, that it is not uh, this congregation, it's not the Methodist Church, it's not me, but it is the Lord who invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. So therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. That's the part. You know, we, we pray this prayer every time we take the need. But do we really think about it? What I was talking about this morning, when we pass up someone who just needs to be listened to, that's that. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's just take a moment to lift a silent prayer of confession to God. And now hear the good news, my brothers and sisters. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right indeed and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And as we come here this morning, we remember how on that night so long ago, how Jesus took bread, and he blessed it. And he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then on that night, on that same night, later in the meal he, he took a cup and he filled it with wine. We fill it with grape juice today. All to represent the body and blood of Christ. And 
And again, Jesus gave thanks for it, and he offered it to his disciples and said, Take and drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving this morning as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Almighty God, we pray you would pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here this morning and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. And so Jesus took bread, having blessed it, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in that same way, he took the cup. No more sacrificing lambs on the altar. I am the, the final sacrificial lamb. My blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins, past, present, and future of all people. Jesus said, take it from me. And every time you do it, do it in remembrance of me and the thing. So I'm going to invite Marcia to come. I'm going to invite Laura Lewis to come. two chalices here because uh, it's been a while since I've done this but I forgot about the gluten free so we don't want to dip uh, in the same chalice uh, Janice the body of Christ that will be Of people involved. You, you're all part of the worship team, by the way. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I 
and Gordon's going to have breathing your partner. So Gordon's going to have uh, the little cup, and if you prefer to take that, please take that. Gordon, how would you prefer to have me today? Okay. So whenever you get, you don't have to do it now, but okay. So ushers, could you? Oh, it's choir first. Okay. Come on, choir. I'll get the hang of it, yeah. I've served communion, but not uh, not with uh, 10 people. <laughs> Thank you, the body of Christ. I would love for you.
Let us share together in the prayer after receiving. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. Uh, as you are able, I invite you to stand for our closing hymn. This is my song. Uh, I, I picked this one because it's one of my favorites. And, uh, and it, it, it just talks about God's people all over the world. You know, we kind of think what we have is best, but people who live somewhere else think the same thing. And so we sing together, this is my song.